Hi, my name is Maria. Welcome to my channel MH Books. And today we're going to film the book haul from the Bookshops of London video. Um, we have seven books to get through. Um, this is the second video that I've played the game of what's the worst and best excuse and come up for buying books. You can see from things like this images like this I actually have so many books that they're piled on top of each other now at this stage I have over 700 I haven't read yet which is disgraceful and I really have no excuses for buying more books except I do have excuses and these are the excuses as we go overriding excuse for this is my bonus excuse because of Brexit it may be more, far more difficult to get to Ireland to get to the UK from Ireland in the future um, so especially, you know, the, the mainland of Britain, um, the border of Northern Ireland will be different. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, <laughs> so it's just an extra bonus excuse. So excuse number three. Um, excuse number three for buying books is when I was filming this, Future Marina has to do some work and in inputting it in the beautiful Daunt Books in Cheapside, the store is Cheapside. Oh, I have to do it that way because I'm filming. I'm showing the film. Sorry, don't book the cheap side. Um, I knocked over this a pile of books, and it was this book. Um, it was on one of those circular tables. I knocked it over with my backpack because I was walking backwards. And this book, I'm going to be I'm going to be using the blurbs because this is what I used to pick the books because I was roaming um, in, t in a different country and, uh, and I had limited um, 3G data on my plan so I didn't want to waste all my data checking Goodreads so I went completely by blurbs only and the old-fashioned way of picking the book. So the book I chose from Dawn's The Cheap Side was Sarah Strike or oh, chose me so that's the excuse the book chose me it fell off the table. Sarah Strike's book The Gravity of Love um, so from the blurb Jim, charming, captivating, much loved by his women friends, has attempted suicide several times and is incarcerated in the Beckhamburger Psychiatric Hospital. Someday soon, he tells his daughter he will swallow 60 tablets, help them down with a bottle of whiskey and swim and possibly far out into the Atlantic. Will he really? This question plagues Jim's daughter, Jackie, the narrator of this powerful novel, who is addicted to the hospital as her house father is, a, is to alcohol. Through her, we understand the emotional needs of diehard alcoholics. The rationally uroxicidal, ur which I had to look up, means uh, murdering your wife, and other apparently normal inhabitants of a psychiatric unit in the process of shutting down, depriving them of the only place they have known as home. An intensely poetic novel by one of Sweden's most exciting literary talents. So looking forward to reading this. I actually get excited just reading the blurb. Um, should we put them up here? You can't see it there, but it's up there. Okay. <laughs> um, the next one I bought from Blackwells. Blackwells has practically a whole shop. Well, three for twos. I was only allowed to buy one book. If you watched the, the previous... Um, because of luggage allowances from the previous thing, so I was allowed to buy three for two. I was only allowed to buy one book, so I couldn't get the three for two, even though the whole shop was practically full of three for two. So I had to find a book that wasn't on three for two, or I wouldn't buy it. So if I was going to break my normal habit of buying three for two, I might as well break my habit completely. And buy a book that didn't doesn't have a, a Maria sounding name to it, so not a dark sounding name, but a light and happy sounding name. And what better name? So that's my excuse. This one had, a, you know, I'm going against the norms. When you're going to break a rule, you're going to break all rules. So this is I was just the book was completely a non Maria book. So therefore, that's my excuse, a strange excuse. But there you go. Some of them are going to be bad. And the book I chose, you, you couldn't get it, a less Maria sounding name. And that was Happiness by Amita For Forna. Um, and the blur from this one, again, it was actually based in London too, so that was another um, plus for it. Waterloo Bridge, London. Two strangers collide. Attila, a Guanan psych psychiatrist, and Jean, an American studying urban foxes. 
Gene joins Attila in, her, in his search for his niece's missing son and mobilizes a network of volunteer fox spotters she has built up, mainly from West African immigrants working in London streets and hotel doorways. As Jean and Attila's friendship deepens, Forna asks us to consider the values of society we live in, a coexistence of one another and all living creatures, and the true nature of happiness. This is actually quite interesting that the book I'm reading at the moment is um, Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead and also addresses a lot, an awful lot of um, nature living with humans and the, the nature of happiness, the author, the protagonist isn't incredibly happy but appears to be happy to most of the humans that she approach her or she approaches. Um, so let me treat for this one as well obviously. You wouldn't pick him if you weren't. But I can't wait to read this one. Then next Future Maria has to do some work again. She was looking at um, stone tablets and some of the oldest writings in the world Obviously, it makes the joke in the video about buying, you know, they wouldn't let me haul the stone tablet or the, because it was too heavy on my luggage allowance. But there is <laughs> a reprint of it, and that is the Epic of Gilgamesh, um, which is a 4,000 year old epic. Um, it's actually a poem written on stone tablets originally um, about King Yurik in the world's oldest epic predating Homer by many centuries. The story tells of Gilgamesh's adventures with the wild man en Enikhu and his arduous journey to the ends of the earth in the quest of Babylonian Noah and the secret of immortality. In addition to its themes of family, friendship and, and duties of kings, the epic of Gilgamesh is above all about mankind's eternal struggle with the fear of death. So... 4,000 years ago, they were writing Maria kind of stories. So the Battle of Gilgamesh, but in the British Museum bookshop. Um, so the reason I bought this, so this is excuse number five, I got my numbers right, was I ha um, I couldn't bring it home in clay tablets, but it was available in a much lighter hardback, a, a paperback. That's excuse number five. I mean, clay tablets. How many times have people use clay tablets as an excuse to buy books? The fourth book um, in this haul, it's a six, excuse number six, is Booktube and Twitter made me do it. A book I was seeing a lot on Booktube and Twitter at the time, and I really, really, really wanted it as a result. Um, was Dancer from the Dance, so um, I knew that I could get that quite easily in Gaze the Word. I actually seen that on Twitter, somebody buying it in Gaze the Word. Um, this is um, a, a story um, set in the 1970s gay club scene. Um, it's supposed to be the Great Gatsby of the 1970s. Um, Oh, I just seen in this a life changing read for me by Rupert Everett. So if if, if sorry if it changed Rupert Everett's life, then it has to be good. Um, <laughs> so excuse number one, two, three, four, five, six is um, BookTube and um, Book Twitter made me do it. This is a common excuse. I've now used up really the, the one of the most common excuses can't use it again there'll be no repeat re repetition of excuses so I can't use that as an excuse again all right after that I went into the wonderful Scoobs Scoobs is a book a second-hand bookshop and at the time they were had they were called security because people were throwing little kids are throwing books down the stairs they're down in the basement and there I have the excuse of and again, I'm using up a really good excuse I'm not going to be able to use again. This is probably my light source at the moment. So I'm going to get a better light source with this, this, this film malarkey. Um, so this book, because I was reading Dance in the Summer of Night at the time, and I was almost finished. So if you finish an author, Marie allows herself to buy another book by that author, even though she already has about five or six of this author on read. And so that's Dance in the Song of Kali. This is his first book he bought. He bought he the first, the first book <laughs> he wrote. Um, 
it's set in India and it's a horror novel. Um, he doesn't, some of his, his, his writing is historical fiction, some of it's sci-fi, but this is a horror novel. So it's Calcutta, a monster city of immense slums, disease and misery, is classed in the fetid embrace of an ancient cult. At his decaying core is the goddess Kali, the dark mother of pain, far-armed and eternal. Her song, the sound of death and destruction. Um, so that is why, but it's actually brand new too. So I bought for four pounds fifty. So we can't, we can't really give out by that. Then the beautiful Persephone book. I'm going. We're future Maria is going to have to do some work again, and then put here. But for the, uh, I had. The, the excuse of, I seen another bookshop, I really wanted it, but I was only allowed to buy one book from that bookshop, but I knew that I, it was a Persephone book and I could get it from Persephone. <laughs> excuse. <laughs> so, another bookshop made me buy it? Excuse. Yeah, another bookshop made me buy this one. So I saw this in Gay is the Word. It, it was in the lesbian section. It, this is a story, so it's Despised and Rejected by Rose Alanti. Um, this is a story um, written, it was published in 1918, set in the First World War um, by a pacifist gay man who meets a woman who is a lesbian who doesn't actually realise she's a lesbian. Um, it is a classic that has been re-released by Persephone recently um, um, that I'm curious about and wanted to read. But seen it originally in Gay is the Word, bought it in Persephone Bookmarks, uh, Bookmarks Bookshop because you can also get the book, bookmark there. Um, and I'd already known which book I was going to buy from Gay is the Word before I went in. So there's that one. Now we're running out of spaces for these things. Please don't kill me. All right, then I broke uh, a, a slight rule. We went into Forbidden Planet, um, which sells sci-fi, um, fantasy and horror. Looked at the horror section, pathetically bad horror section, I thought. Um, so I found a hard to pick one. Um, so I actually did turn on my data. So from the books that I hadn't read that were either money off or signed, I picked one that was signed, um, that a good reads friend of mine reviewed as a book that she read over the day of Halloween and the night, stopping only to give sugar to children who, who came to the door. Um, and there is anybody to read after dark. So this one has the excuse of, it. I was dared to read this after dark. <laughs> and, I, and it was challenge accepted. So someone dares me. I accept the dare. So I had to buy the book, obviously. So this is Christopher Gold's Dead Ringers. Um, I'm not seeing why this is scary. Um, it's about Tess Devon who runs to her ex-husband, Nick, on a Boston sidewalk and is furiously he pretends not to know her. Afterwards, tells caught her his cell to have it out with him on to discover he's a do Hampshire with his current girlfriend. But if Nick is not in Boston, who is this person she counted on the street? Blah blah blah. So I'm not sure how this becomes scary. I am actually quite intrigued how it becomes scary. Um, signed by the author as well. Um, the advantage of going to big big shops is you can get signed things. Um, so I am intrigued. Um, if somebody's read this and it's good, tell me it's good. Um, so because the last bookshop I went to was Foils, and because. Files I either go to the um, staff recommends, which is mostly literary fiction usually, or the um, and the horror section because the shop is so bloody big. Um, and in and in foils, the horror section had was better than in Forbidden Planet. To be uh, and honestly, that could have just been the way it was that day. Um, remember, this is only about the second time. Well. I've been to Forbidden Planet about four or five times, but the second time I've been to Foils. Um, and I picked a book from the horror section because it's folk horror, 
and I don't know where Focar is. So this is excuse number nine, if I got my sums right. So excuse number nine is, I bought it because I didn't know what this genre was, and it's about time I knew what folk horror was. And the book is Water Shall Refuse Them by Lucy Knight McKnight Hardy. Water Shall Refuse Them. Um, it's been shot listed for the Caledonian Novel Award. It's, it's a Welsh author. Um, they have to open it to, because it's a beautiful copy with French flaps. So it's set in a heat wave in 1976. I do like books set then. Um, uh, followed by the accidental drowning of her sister, 16 year old Nif and her family moved to a small village in the Welsh borders to escape their grief. But rural seclusion brings, doesn't bring relief. As the family unravels, Nif begins to put together her own form of witchcraft, collecting talismans from the sun bleached land. That is until she meets Mali, a teen boy, he takes a keen interest in her and has his own secret rights to divulge. Reminiscence is suspense Shirley Jackson is soaked in the folk horror of the British Isles. Water Show Refuse Him is atmospheric, couple of age novel and a thrilling debut. So it actually sounds really good. Um, there's a little bit of that in Wakenhurst, which I'm reading at the moment too, and that she's making up her own kind of sort of witchcraft. So there you go. So there are my, that's my book haul um, from London. Um, I hope whatever you're reading, that you're enjoying it. Um, I hope that um, whatever you're buying or borrowing, um, that you're enjoying it. And until next time.